Let's go. Yes, so we have heard a lot about food generation, we have a lot, uh, heard a lot about symbols and, and, and database libraries and all that stuff, but in the end you want to have a printed circuit board. And I think a Gerber's are the right way to go in this, and you may want to compare them, and that is something Andy White will talk about, I think. It's about Gerber diff tool, so like diff file and so. Uh, Andy White is an electronics engineer and chartered mechanical engineer. Uh, through his design house, Parameter, is it that? Yeah. Parameter Electronics. He has been using open source EDA and engineering tools to bring electronic products to the market since 2008. His experience at research labs in uh, diverse fields, such as AI for Sony, for, for Sony, uh, <laughs> Robotics platforms and biometrics for air travel gives him insights into innovative products development. So please join me in welcoming him. Hi everyone. Um, so thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I mean, this is a slightly different talk. Uh, so I'm really grateful to the organizers and to, to KeyCAD for letting me talk about a little project that I've been working on. Um, I, you know, so, uh, you know, this is uh, adjacent to KiCad, it's not connected, um, but, you know, I, I think I'll, in the talk, I will talk um, about, you know, a, a gap I found in the tools I had and something that I wanted, how I went about sort of filling that in for now um, and then where I think that might fit into open source EDA tools and the sort of um, the KiCad sort of ecosystem. Um, having said that, I don't really know. I'm, you know, I'm just working with tools that I have and, and what I want. So um, if you could keep, you know, your mind open and if there's things that you want, um, you know, if there's a way that you could see this being useful, please let me know either in the, the questions at the end or uh, afterwards. This talk, um, you know, I'm, I've been working on this only a month or two, two months. Um, but as most people who, you know, here do software, you know that you jump around a bit. And I'm now trying to tell you this as a sort of linear story. So if you find that uh, there's a bit, uh, I reference something that I didn't sort of already tell you, that's probably because I was jumping around as I was developing. So, you know, I've done my best to make this a straightforward story. Um, so yeah, and then finally, keep your mind engaged. Um, personally, I, um, you know, so the need for the software came from um, me not having a tool for comparing Gerber files. I routinely sort of end up with uh, designs that are in the market, and there'll be um, slight variants, the change a connector, or you change some component on the board. And then you end up with sort of multiple bit build packs um, which may, may or may not be valid, and I'm, I'm presuming that everyone else here is very organized and never needs this, but I felt like it would be really useful to kind of uh, compare what the differences are on a set of Gerber files, not, uh, rather than just a single layer. Before I, you know, before I went in and started looking, I went on to, to uh, GitHub, and I typed in Gerber difference, and, and these were, there, there were a few tools around that did it, um, uh, if there is a way that, you know, is the de facto standard that everyone uses, please let me know. Um, you can certainly use XOR in GERBview. Um, that, that's good, but you have to know the layers that you're looking at, so you have to select the two layers from the two directories. Um, what I kind of wanted was to just to select two directories and have it compare all of the Gerber files. Um, the, the, uh, I knew that I wanted to use Python for the project, um, and there is a sort of set of, of tools using PCB tools. But when I looked into this, I sort of found the back end wasn't very active. Um, I couldn't find people who were developing with it. Uh, I did speak to someone who, who was using it for their project, and they sort of said, well, I maintain it for my project, but not generally. Um, so that was where I sort of thought, OK, well, you know, I, I started looking at ways to generate um, Gerber files with Python, and I found a sort of few options for the back end, and then I started thinking about what I actually wanted. You know, what, what do I actually want in terms of a Gerber difference tool? And um, I don't know how many people here use MELD. Um, MELD's a sort of graphical diff tool. Um, it's open source. 
And I use it often when I'm looking at different pieces of source code that I've checked out. Um, it's quite good in that, uh, you know, like a, a standard diff, it'll show you, um, well, unlike a standard diff, it'll show you the lines that are the same. It gives you, you know, a bit of a preview of what's going on, and it shows you the two, um, the, the differences graphically and lets you sort of deal with that. It also shows you new lines that are added. Um, so essentially, you know, I, I'm actually an electronic engineer. I'm really not a software engineer, so please don't pick, pick apart my software too much. Um, you know, this was my approach to sort of building a tool that I could use. First of all, I, you know, I knew I was going to use Python, so I knew I probably wanted to use TK Inter and Pillow. Um, I had a rough idea of that. I worked through some of the back-end options that I was kind of looking at. Um, and then I, I have to admit, I used ChatGPT quite a bit. Um, I wasn't using a, a co-pilot or anything slightly more advanced, but I'll, I'll show you what, how I approached that. Um, and I knew that the way I wanted to compare the Gerber files was as images, as graphical data, rather than diffing the text. Um, so, you know, from looking at what options were about, I knew that there was the option of using PyGerber, which was uh, a piece of software um, that I'd, I'd found initially. There was PCB tools, which uh, seemed to be languishing a little bit, and there was using GerbView to, um, as, a, as a command line interface. Um, uh, so, excuse me. Um, so the results, you know, PyGerber looked pretty good initially. Um, PCB tools uh, didn't seem to be developed anymore. I, I mean, please correct me if, if I'm wrong about that, and, and if anyone knows, please please get in touch. Um, and then scripting GerbView was kind of good, but it added a dependency to an outside piece of pro, uh, code that I didn't necessarily see as the right way to go. Um, I also got in touch through through GitHub to the developers of each of these things. And with PCB tools, I was talking uh, about a fork um, of the code. I got in touch with them. With PyGerber, I found that I was talking to um, a gentleman uh, called Christoph Wyszynowski. Um, and he, he sort of got back to me. And he was saying, OK, I'm dead excited about using people using PyGerber. But my coding skills have got a lot better. Uh, and I want to redevelop it. So. <laughs> After I started the project, he brought out PyGerber 2.0, um, and I've switched over to just using that. Um, the reason there is, you know, whilst excuse me, whilst I was using um, all of the options and I investigated those, it became really hard to debug everything. Um, I'm going to use a screenshot of ChatGPT. This is just the free version of ChatGPT, um, and this is how the project started. As I typed into the into the line. You know, help me design a TKU into GUI. There should be three vertical columns on the left and right. There should be directory selectors and a list of radio buttons that show that each image file in the selected directory. I didn't worry ChatGPT with Gerber files, um, but that was just kind of a broad description of what I had in mind. Um, ChatGPT, enthusiastic as ever, gave me some code, and the code didn't really do what I wanted. Um, and so the process that I followed was um, just like kind of like the worst buddy coder ever. I just moaned at ChatGPT. Um, and so, um, yeah, I continually just sort of said, OK, that doesn't really do what, you, what I asked you to do. Um, and I tried not to bias it. So I tried to get it to do um, what it would output and just correct what was wrong. And so actually, you know, this was literally the second attempt, and it did produce something that kind of worked. I mean, there were two directory selector fields, and there was an image field in the middle. If you typed out the whole path into either of these fields and pressed enter, it did load them as radio buttons, and it would show images. I mean, it was really cumbersome. Um, but actually, you know, over the next sort of four hours of moaning at ChatGPT, um, I was able to move it along uh, quite a long way until, the, until we got something like this, where it had, um, you know, dialog boxes for the for the directories you picked out, um, and it could show Gerber layers. Um, sorry, it could show image layers. I uh, that was where I sort of took over, and because uh, PyGerber was generating image files in in Python, I could easily just switch that backend over. Um, 
So, I mean, that was done in a day. Um, and I started, you know, basically then thinking about, okay, well, how do we diff Gerber files? And, um, you know, and so I think that, you know, you can do different things. The first thing you can do is a text diff. And that's, you know, super easy, really quick. If the files are identical, you really don't want to go any further because there's no point doing image processing on the files if they're already identical and you know it. Um, so the first thing it does is a text diff, and then it says, okay, those layers are the same. And then the, the, the main thrust of what I was kind of thinking was, okay, let's highlight the differences in an image. Um, and, and so that, that was the next stage. And then I think there's also a kind of useful metric of how many pixels are different. So getting a percentage difference of pixels. Um, so that's the state of the code at the moment. Uh, this is an example where I literally just dragged um, uh, a connector down slightly. Um, and you can see on either side, you can, uh, you can see the layers of Gerber files. You can pick a layer, make that active, and it will tell you the text difference and the image difference on those two files. Um, uh, and then there's also this, uh, in, the, in the pink, there's the kind of highlighted differences on the Gerber file. So, I mean, just as a very quick way of looking at Gerber, you know, as two sets of Gerber files that you might have generated years ago or yesterday, <laughs> um, it's really important. And obviously, if your connector moved by half a millimeter, you might find that really annoys you. Um, so the next stage in the talk is really just to um, see a little bit about why I think this might be a useful tool um, beyond just myself, um, you know, how it fits into an ecosystem of free and open source tool chains. I think they are changing quite quickly. I think, I think things are coming on as, as this uh, meeting sort of attests to. Um, and really, this is just kind of a one-trick pony. My, my app was just a fun project that I did for myself. And so I want everyone to try and think about where it might fit in uh, for them and then maybe for the community. So um, this is a very sort of uh, well-known image of, of continuous integration, continuous deployment in software engineering. Now, um, my opinion is software engineering sort of uh, took the tools of sort of classic engineering version control and stuff and then they made it better. They, they used, you know, for collaboration and for things, they, they built tools for that. Um, and I just wanted to point out that I think there is a really strong analogy in, in between this diagram and each of the stages in the EDA tools. You know, DRC is equivalent to unit testing in a way. Um, you know, your build pack is a bit like your release. Building a PCB is a bit like deployment. Um, we can discuss that one over beer. Um, but I think there are benefits to this perspective because using this perspective, you can then put your designs under uh, version control. You can put all your projects into a, a repository. So you can use GitLab for your KiCad projects. And then that allows you to have um, continuous integration, continuous de uh, uh, deployment for your KiCad outputs. And the command line interface for KiCad makes that really possible. You can output your BOM, output your Gerbers from the server. Um, and I think whilst that might not be the way you work and I would never force anyone to work a certain way, having a, a process for this is useful if you're doing ISO 9000 or if you're in uh, medical products, ISO uh, 13485. So there are sort of good reasons to have this automated because then you won't miss a step or get it wrong and it's all documented. So that's quite exciting. Uh, does diff Gerber fit into this trend? Well, I mean, if you are generating output files on a server, I think it's really important to be able to see quickly what the changes are in them. So I think there is a use case for sort of maintaining versions and, you know, outputs of your, of your designs and your projects. The other thing I, I'm quite interested in is converting uh, between EDA tool chains. And then again, um, whilst I haven't, you know, th this is still a work in progress, I think there is... Um, a lot of interesting stuff if you bring a project across from another tool chain, if you're importing from Altium or Jeddah, um, the final step would be, do my Gerber files look similar? Um, and automating that and being able to do a pixel diff on the output of the, um, of the Gerber files would be sort of an important tool, I think. Um, so yeah, this would give you like that extra guarantee, okay, my, my files look similar. 
So where next? Um, I mean, well, this is kind of it, really. I'm, I'm not sort of looking to make this the next Gerber, Gerber viewer, and there's already a good Gerber viewer in KiCad. Um, so where, where, where would I see it going? And I don't know if I see it going anywhere. It's good as a sort of little standalone tool to know about. Um, but could it be added to CI tool chains? And this is me sort of throwing this out to, to everyone in the audience. Um, so uh, to conclude, um, please download and use diffgerber. Um, it, it's software that's out there now. It works more or less. Um, I think you know it's useful for these two use cases of checking your versions as you move forwards. Um, I think it's good for. It may be useful for converting between tool chains. I think as a, as a last step to sort of prove that your, your outputs are the same. And then uh, support uh, PyGerber 2.0, uh, Christoph Wisniewski, um, like I think, you know, if you're using Python for Gerber uh, manipulation, this, this library is probably the, the most active one, so. Okay, thanks for your time, and we'll move over to questions. Uh, hello. Um, so, quick question: Does uh, your tool only work in like a GUI mode, or does it have a command line interface? Uh, well, so my tool is just a GUI. Yeah. Uh, the backend PyGerber um, is 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 an API, so so could easily be scripted. I, I think it, uh, it wouldn't be hard to switch over to a GUI mode of of doing the the diffing. I mean, that's that's. Um, I don't think that's accessible at the minute. But it, right. it could easily be, yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we, we do the, we generate uh, all the manufacturing files in CICD already. And oh, fantastic. This, this would be very useful, like if you do board review as well, to generate those files uh, for the person that reviews the board. Yes. Um, just to see what changed. As yes. Well. Yeah, 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 that's, that's true. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So who is first? Not the spider oh, no, no. dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, linking back to the library uh, merge requests, when you file a merge request on a footprint today, if the footprint exists already, you you do get a graphical diff of the oh. footprint in the in the uh, CI okay. tooling. It's not it's not Gerber's. It's the footprint file format. But uh, yep. the general principle is is something we were already interested in in the, in the library. And I find that very useful. And I just, if that's oh, a question, more of a, by the way, we, yeah, yeah, no, we, no we that, have that is appreciated. Don't, don't feel like and, you have and, to. And for everyone else as well. Yeah. I didn't expect to contribute, but I want to contribute and maybe created a GitHub action, and then we can make a preview on the pull request and then see the, the continuous deployment continuous integration so we can see in the web view, in the browser already the, the diff. It should be very interesting and we can contribute to you, to your repository to make this kind of tools. Um, yes. yes, please. Yes, uh, I haven't actually put up a link, but it is on GitHub already, so, so, so please yes, download and use it. Yeah, it'd also be good to now that uh, Mark has made the DRC scriptable to, to integrate the DRC into that CI chain as well. Okay. Yeah, one, one thing I'm thinking about looking at this, like I, I see a human readable sort of diff and it's actually quite difficult to answer the question, does this change actually make a difference? So I'm wondering whether it's possible to actually determine whether there's a change in connectivity from the diff itself and have it automatically report the change in connectivity. Um, not currently. Uh, so it's not clever in any way at all. It takes image files and it diffs them. You could start doing region analysis, but then you, you'd be better going back into your tool, I think, um, and your design rule check should tell you. Uh, I mean, uh, if there was an error in the output of the, the, the Gerber generation, 
this, um, this would highlight the area, but, but a human would have to look at it at the moment. So. Well, if, you, if you did something with that, then you could also do DRC between. If you did something with that, you could also do DRC between outputs of two different tools. So, for instance, when you output a Gerber from your Altium, then say, are there any kind of, and, and then from KeyCAD, and then say, are there any connectivity changes between these? Which, I mean, there's no way to run DRC between Altium and KeyCAD, so that might be. Yeah, I think this question in general highlights the, uh, the, the lack of good open source CAM tooling, uh, because I think uh, doing more advanced analysis on outputs from CAD tools is uh, sort of what the commercial CAM tools do with uh, you know, net, net list inference and connectivity testing and stuff like that. And, yeah, I think it doesn't really exist, and hopefully it does someday. Okay, now I'm exceeding my competency here, but that triggers the thought of diff E schema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> diff PCP new. Mm -hmm. That's all one group. That's an interesting, uh, interesting component, but what to say about the connectivity is valid as well, yeah? Just to say that, uh, so we already kind of have the diffie schema in our CI uh, CD pipeline for the KiCad code, just to make sure that uh, nothing's changed when we make a commit, that we haven't broken the, 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 the output that you'd expect. So there is something already that we're using in, in the KiCad code base just to check the outputs. This is more a technical question or curiosity. Um, how are you handling the, the comparison based on the pixel? So you are converted it to an image that is a pixel. Uh, are there any issues, um, maybe a different version of the Gerber that will like uh, make one offset of a pixel and then uh, everything will be Mismatch. How, how are you handling these situations on, on comparing pixels? How, how do you this? How do you decide uh, uh, the image size and uh, the pixel so, size and this kind of stuff? Yeah. At the moment, I just pick a, a reasonably high DPI. Um, that's not a great way of doing it, to be honest. Um, the. I mean, I think the the differences would have to be fairly minute for the uh, for the digitization of the image to cause uh, problems for you. But, but I, th I think um, particularly for looking between two EDA tool chains, you'd start to see that happen where you'd get very small differences in corners of flood fills or something uh, picking up pixel differences. And then your, your rasterization might matter. But it, at the moment, I'm, I'm, it's not that advanced at all. So. Thanks for doing this because I, as a hobbyist, I strongly feel there's indeed a very strong lack of CAM tools and I feel this is a very good first step. For, <laughs> I did toward, I, it's one of the better first steps towards some CAM tooling in open source. I'm wondering, are there any other tools in uh, open source CAM tools that you're aware of for Gerber and such? Um, well, PCB Tools has some projects from it ah, that okay. act as CAM tools. So particularly, I'd have to get, get on to GitHub and check my, my history. but. Uh, particularly, there are some that I know people were using with their laser cutter, but I think it was like they were they were cutting their own PCBs out themselves, and they'd sort of concentrated on that. They weren't making a tool for it, okay. so um, I'm I'm not aware. Yeah, it could, uh, it's an area I could do improvement there again. Thank you for improving it. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a significant improvement for this. There is actually one more maintained library called Gerbonara. Ah. Have you heard of that one? No, I haven't. So it's a fork and massive extension of PCB tools. Ah, okay. And it, it has a really sane API, which is rare with these tools. Yes. Yeah, you might want to have I a look at look that. I will look into that, yeah, thank you. No more questions? So thank you for your contribution, then.
Thank you.